Hello there, my name's Scott. Today I'm gonna to be doing a review on the Tafen Repairable Atomizer, which I received from www.smokerstore.com. Before I start though, I must point out I did receive it free of charge for the purpose of conducting a review, but my opinion of the product remains true on its necro, as always. Okay, let's go straight ahead, show you how to get it all set up, and uh, have a look at it in a bit more detail. Okay, so the Tafen Repairable Atomizer can be set up in uh, quite a few different ways. You can use it with Type A tanks, you can use it with Type B tanks, you can set it up very similar to how the, uh, the spheroid works, you can set it up as a Genesis style atomizer, etc, etc. Now according to the website, you basically go along and you select the base section first, which are these parts here, and then separately you then uh, choose what sort of configuration you want to set up as. Now the, uh, like the base sort of package consists of like, the main body of the atomizer, an ego cover, so if you're going to use it on like an ego style battery, you can obviously uh, just put this on, it's going to hide all the threads and make it look a little bit smarter. And you're going to get this uh, pole extension. So if you want to use or set it up as a Genesis style atomizer, you just uh, remove one of the terminals, replace it with these, and then you can add a stainless steel mesh wick. Also included is a little carrying pouch to uh, carry it all around in, and a bag which contains some two millimeter fiberglass wick and some 0.20 gauge wire. All made out of stainless steel, the machine quality is excellent, all the parts screw together very nice and smooth indeed. Uh, has a 510 connection, so it can be used on any device, it also has a 510 atomizer connection, and uh, the centre pin is adjustable, so if you're finding that you're not getting a good contact, you can just use a Phillips screwdriver to unscrew it a little bit, and you're gonna get a really nice uh, solid connection there. Okay, so like I said, the Tafen is available in a few different sort of configurations, and you basically buy the base section on its own, and then you sort of separately choose what uh, sort of setup you want to go with it. Now, I've tried the, uh, all the setups, and uh, this one here is by far my favourite of the bunch. I'm going to concentrate on this one for the actual review. Now, this works very similar to the, uh, the spheroid, where it uses the like a uh, sort of serra uh, filter material inside here, and also I'm going to show you that in a second. Uh, now, if you go onto the website and you want to sort of choose this option, it is a German website, and if you use Google Translate, it comes up as a Typhoon cotton tank. But it's obviously uh, there's no cotton in there; it is the like the Sarah sort of fish filter material. Okay, so let's uh, strip this down and then uh, show you how to set it up. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is remove this long pole here, which is basically a wick holder, and it's used in uh, some of the other setups, but it's not needed in the way that I'm going to set it up now. So to remove it, you've just got to grab hold of it tight, give it a pull and a bit of a wiggle, and it will eventually slide out. Okay, so like I said, the uh, the Tafen base sort of package does come with some wick and wire. I've not actually used any of the wick and wire that comes with it, though. I've just been sort of sticking with my own stuff because I've got plenty of it, basically. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of uh, wick and I've just sort of doubled it over. Uh, the wick was about sort of 10 centimetres long, so once it's doubled over, probably looking around sort of five centimetres. I'm just going to hold it roughly in the middle and uh, take some uh, 0.20 gauge camphor wire, hold it all in, in between my finger and thumb, and then just wrap it around sort of five coil or something like that. Actually, four coils, that should do me. And I want to have it so uh, both ends of the wire are sort of on the same side. Okay, at this stage, I just want to quickly point out that these two here are your terminals, your positive and your negative. And this little sort of nubbin is like uh, your air hole, and it's linked down to this hole on the side there. Now, when you add your coil, you want to make sure that the coil is placed directly above the air hole on this side. If you add the coil on this side, then you're going to get quite bad vapour production. So just make sure the coil is placed directly above the air hole, and you should get uh, plenty of vapour. Okay, so what I'm going to do now then is just hold the coil in place so it's directly above that air hole and take one of the uh, one of the wires, feed from the inside underneath the screw head and feed this all back around and take a Phillips screwdriver and just tighten it up. Like so. And then just basically repeat it with the other end of the wire. So again, coming from the inside underneath that, uh, that screw there, take a Phillips screwdriver and tighten it up. 
So it should look a little bit like that. And then for the next stage, we can just remove the two excess pieces of wire. And uh, you can use a pair of cutters, but personally I prefer to just apply a bit of tension, give the wire a spin, and it will snap off nice and clean. So now the coil has been put in place, I'm just going to attach it to my probe area and do a quick ohm reading, just see what sort of resistance I'm getting. And it is reading 1.3 ohms. And as you can see, all the coils are glowing nice and evenly. Now the uh, two pieces of wick don't need to be uh, quite this long, so I'm just going to sort of use a pair of scissors to trim them up. And I'm going to leave them so probably around sort of around sort of 15 millimeters long. And it should be uh, just about right. And then whilst I'm here, I'm also going to just give the, uh, the wick a quick prime with some e-liquid. That seems to be fine. Okay, so like I said, the, uh, the tapering can be set up in quite a few different sort of configurations. And uh, in this review, I'm going to be concentrating on a setup that makes it very similar to a uh, quite a popular atomizer called the Spheroid. And uh, this uh, setup, you know, really does uh, work very nicely for me personally. Now it uses this um, sort of um, fish filter material, and it doesn't actually come with these parts, unfortunately. You will need to get that separately, but they do sell it on the website. Uh, now I've already got a piece here that's uh, cut to size, and I've been using this piece now for around four weeks, something like that. And uh, you know, every time you know, I want to change flavour, if it starts looking a bit grubby, I you know, just rinse under a cold tap, pat it dry, and so you can start using it again. So it is uh, quite economical stuff. So uh, as it's already cut to size, all I need to do is just uh, wrap it around this uh, sort of shaft, like so. And then uh, just take the, uh, the tank and just uh, screw it into that. And uh, that's it, pretty much done, really. And that's it, you're ready to uh, fill it up. Okay, so hopefully inside there you can see all the filling material that is wrapped around that central column. And what I'm going to do now is just uh, start adding some e-liquid to fill up the tank. It holds around two, two and a half mil of juice. And to fill it up, you know, you've just got to either use a syringe or you know, pour your juice against the side there. Just allow it to soak in. And, uh, you know, just keep on repeating that until eventually it will no longer soak into the, uh, into the filling material. That lets you know it's uh, full up. Now obviously once you've got your base uh, section of the atomizer in here, the wick pieces are, are going to be in contact with that uh, filling material and it's then going to suck the juice out and feed it down onto the heating coil. Now if you're finding that you're getting dry hits because it's not wicking fast enough, then you can remove some of the, uh, the filling material, that will speed it up. And then opposite, you know, if you're finding that it's wicking too much and you start getting a bit of flooding, then you can add some wicking material to uh, slow it down. Okay, so I'm just going to start adding some juice, fill it up and then uh, move on to the next stage. Okay, so the tank has been filled up with some e-liquid and the coil is all primed and rearing to go. So all I need to do now is connect the two pieces together. Now what I do is I just uh, squeeze the wicks like that, push them in and uh, screw it on, you know, nice and simple. And then finally, just need to uh, add my drip tip in the top there. And that's it, all ready to go. Okay, so that is the Tafen repairable atomizer in what Google translates as a Typhoon cotton tank. Let's go ahead and see what it vapes like. Okay, so that is the Tafen repairable atomizer. And like I said in the close-up shots, it is available in quite a few different setups, but each setup is purchased separately, so it doesn't come in like a, a big bundle, unfortunately. So the one that I'm gonna be concentrating on is what Google translates as a Typhoon cotton tank. 
So if you go into the website, click the old Google Translate button, and you should be able to uh, work out what one I'm using here. So I filled up the tank with some 18 milligram strength tobacco flavoured e-liquid. It's just a, a PG based e-liquid. The coil is now reading 1.5 ohms and I've got it on my Mini Pro Vary which is currently set at 3.7 volts. And like, Vaporise, you know, you get a really nice amount of vapour out of it. And uh, also, I'm using a Pro Vary here, which is a, a variable voltage device. But you know, even if you've only got like, um, like a standard sort of Ego battery, which is going to be around the same sort of voltage what I'm using here, you know, you should still be able to get a really nice amount of vapour out of it. The um, flavour, like I'm using my regular sort of uh, tobacco flavoured e liquid pretty much what I use all day, every day. And you know, I'm finding that, you know, it really is uh, very good for bringing out the flavour, you know, it's really coming through nice and strong. And uh, the throat here was, I'm getting a really nice, uh, strong kick in the back of my throat. I like to do a mouth inhale, that's where you take the vape into your mouth, then breathe it down to your lungs, you know, get that nice little solid thump now. And uh, you know, compared to other atomizers, it's easily on par, maybe even a little bit sort of stronger than, I'm not going to mention names, but you know, maybe a little bit stronger to other ones that are similar to this, let's put it that way. Now, overall, it's been a, a really nice vape. Um, one negative about it though, is that when you first get it in this mode anyway, you will be pulling your hair out for the first sort of day probably to try and work out the correct amount of filling material that you need to put into the tank. If you put in too much, it just doesn't wick and you start getting sort of really nasty sort of dry hits. If you put in too little, then it just sort of pisses straight out basically. And then like if you leave it alone for any sort of length of time, then you're just gonna find your mod covered in e-liquid. But like uh, once you have worked out the uh, correct amount you need for the sort of viscosity, whatever that word is, of your e-liquid, because obviously thicker e-liquids are going to require less amount of the material to make sure it wicks properly, and thinner ones will probably require a little bit more material to make sure it doesn't sort of fall straight out. So you know you do have to sort of muck about a little bit to begin with, but once you've worked out you know the the right amount of uh, filling material, and then you're sort of good to go really, and not had any sort of problems since then. Like I said, now I've had that one little tiny piece of. Um, uh, not fiberglass, the um, Sarah sort of fish filter. Been using the same piece in there for about the last sort of four, four or five weeks now, something like that. Not replaced or anything, just give it a quick rinse under a tap. So, you know, it really is uh, sort of very economical stuff. And, uh, you know, that one piece is perfect size for the e liquid that I use in there. I've not had any problems since then. No, so uh, overall, it's a really nice atomizer. Very nicely, uh, very nicely machined. The, the actual finish of it is excellent. No sort of little blemishes or marks. It's got a. Um, has got, if you run your finger now down, you can feel very tiny little grooves, but they're so, they're so thin, you can't really sort of pick them out with your, with your actual one. It just gives it a really nice uh, finish. So like I said, overall, it's a really nice atomizer. For the first sort of day or so, you're probably going to be swearing at it a few times to try and work out what the exact uh, amount of filling material you need in there. But once you've got that sorted, you know, you really are good to go. Not a great deal else I can really tell you about it. Now, if you fancy trying one out for yourself, go along to www.smokerstore.com. Thank you very much for watching, and also come along and visit my website at www.esigreviews.com. That's e-sig-reviews.com. Cheers, guys. Happy vaping. See you later.